if you don't release my portion, you will die. In the name of Jesus. Uh huh. Any power anywhere. Satan on my portion. Be unseated or die. Be unseated or die. Uh huh. Any power anywhere. Sitting on my portion. Be unseated or you die. Be unseated or you die. Be unseated or you die. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Say all wicked prayers against me and my family. Backfire. In the name of Jesus. Wicked prayers against me, against my family, against my children, against my household. Backfire. 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 Wicked prayers against me, or rituals, or sacrifices against my life, my family, my children. Backfire, 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 backfire in the name of Jesus. Wicked prayers against me, evil sacrifices. Ungodly desires over my life. Backfire, 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 backfire. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, wicked trees. Occupy my fertile ground. Die to your roots. In the name of Jesus. All wicked trees. Occupy my fertile ground. Die to your roots. Die to your roots. Die, 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 die. Wicked trees. Evil trees. Occupy my fertile ground. Die to your roots. Die to your roots. Die, 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 die. die. Tree of infirmity, of sickness, of diseases, of non achievement. Tree of poverty. Tree of failure. Die to your roots. Die to your roots. Die, 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 die to your roots. In Jesus' name we pray. Heaven defend me, heaven defend me, heaven defend me. Heaven defend me, oh. Heaven defend me. Heaven defend me, heaven defend me, heaven defend me. Heaven defend me. Heaven defend me, oh. Let me go. 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 Let me go.
Hallelujah. Yes. Almighty Father, we thank you. We exalt your holy name. You are the only God that we serve. We serve no other God. May we never serve another God. May we never serve another God. And as we serve you in truth and in spirit, move on our behalf. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to discuss and talk with us this morning on what I call, I know who you are. Say your neighbor. I know who you are. are you sure? Amen. I know what? I know who you are. Praise the Lord. Many lives have been destroyed. 
Many destinies have been scattered. Many homes have been broken down because people thought they know who you are. Amen. Amen. Many have been limited. They could not fulfill destiny because somebody told them, I know who you are. I know how far you can go. I know you very well. You can't do more than you are doing. And they settle for that. Whatever limitation has been imposed on your life, the Lord will destroy today. Yeah. I say the Lord will destroy today. Yeah. Let's open our Bible to 1 Samuel chapter 17. First Samuel 17. Reading from verse 26. You remember David went to the battlefield uh, to give food to his brethren and they were um, faced with Goliath who would not let them go. He stagnated their lives. And David was there and they saw the scene, saw what was going on. And David spoke to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine and take it away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killed him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he speak unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thy heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. Amen. He looked at David. He said, I know you came here for a purpose. You didn't come to give us food. You came so that you can see the battle. You came so that you can gossip. You came because you are the type who will not let anything go by unnoticed. I know who you are. I know why you have come. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Brothers and sisters, God created us with unique abilities. And he created us for a purpose. There are abilities, there are virtues, there are qualities that God deposited in you. And he deposited them for a purpose. For you to fulfill a destiny that will glorify his name. Remember in Jeremiah chapter 1. Verse 4, it said, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. God had an ordination before you were formed in your mother's womb. God ordained you for a purpose, and he has endued you with abilities, with qualities that will make you to fulfill that purpose. But many have been limited because of imposed limitations. People who did not believe in you, they wrote you off. And as a result of that, you wrote yourself off. It is time for you to take back your destiny. It is time for you to take back what God has destined you to be. A failure does not mean the end of your destiny. That you are facing challenges today does not mean God has written you off. Don't allow any man to write you off. Praise the Lord. The Bible says we are God's masterpiece. Amen. We are who? God's masterpiece. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God took time to create you. You are not an accident of creation. And don't let anybody tell you or show you or prove to you that God made a mistake for creating you. Praise the Lord. Don't let circumstances make you to believe that God made a mistake for creating you. God planned your life from the beginning. He had a purpose for your life. He ordained you 
a priest unto nations, and he has given you abilities. He has given you power. He has given you enablement for you to pursue and fulfill your destiny. Praise the Lord. What I'm saying is that your gifts, your abilities, your talents, they are given to you by God for specific purposes. Amen? And you will only, you will only fulfill your destiny when you remove your limitations. Praise the Lord. I read the story of a lady. She was put into jail for an offense. And I think she spent eight years in jail. Her family, of course, rejected her. Nobody wanted to do anything to do with her. But while in prison, he conceived an idea to publish books. Today, the lady sits on $2.8 billion business. She was written off, but she did not write herself off. She did not allow her past to determine her future. Many of us, we are here today, we are not moving forward, we are not making progress because we have allowed what people said about us to stick to us. Amen? I told you my own story a long time ago. I was trying to talk to a lady, and the lady looked at me and said, you are too short for me. You are too short for me. And that stuck with me. I was blaming God. Why will you make me a short man? Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. To call the long story short, this girl eventually married my friend, who is even shorter than myself. Praise the Lord. But that stuck with me for a long time. I would look at me and I began to envy all people that you are specially made. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The Lord will empower us in the name of Jesus. So when you allow people to determine who you are, they determine your destiny. They frustrate the plan of God for your life. He told David, I know who you are. You came for mischief. You didn't come to just give us food. You used that opportunity so that you can spy, so that you can see what is going on here. You don't let things go by. But David did not allow that to stick to him. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. And when you look at David, when you look at his position, when you look at his skill, it was not an indicator of his destiny. It was not number one. Remember, there was a time when they wanted to anoint the king in Jesus' house. He was the one considered the last. His position would have written him off, but he did not allow that. Many of us were written off. Oh, it's because I'm the last one. Oh, it's because I'm the firstborn. That is why this trouble is coming upon me. No, God has a reason for making you firstborn. Amen? He had a reason for creating you the way you are created. He has a reason for making you short like myself. You remember Apostle Paul, when he was about to escape and they could not uh, get him to go, because he was short, they put him in a basket. If not because of his height, if he was as tall as he be, he would have been dead. Because they, would have, they can't put him in a, in a basket. Praise the Lord. So God created you the way you are because he has a purpose for your life. So don't regret your creation. Examine your life. See the way forward. And you will see that you are fearfully, wonderfully, and gloriously made. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I pray the Lord will empower us in the mighty name of Jesus. So it is a dangerous attitude when you allow people to determine who you are. Amen. You see, this is how God works. If you look at the life of David, at the end of the day, what did God say about him? A man after my own heart. Amen? Now, if you look at the life of David, and you see how human beings are, his own blood brother wrote him off. Marat said, I know who you are. Human beings will look at your present and your past, they judge your future. Is that right? You made a mistake or two mistakes, nothing good can come out of his Nazareth. His future is destroyed. I have nothing to do with him again. 
That is human beings. Are you hearing me? God will forgive your sins. He will work with who you can be. He's not looking at your present situation or your past situation. What good can he bring out of your life? That is his focus. Do you follow me? That is why unless you come to that fact, that knowledge, and let that one be entrenched into you, many of us will live limited lives. And that is not the plan of God for your life. Your past is your past. You can only learn from your past. You don't need to go to your past. The mistake you made yesterday, you don't need to go back to that mistake. And you don't need to allow that mistake to destroy your future. You have a glorious future. Those of us who are preaching today, who are born again, who are on fire for Christ, who are something else before. If God will use human measure to judge us, I won't be standing here today preaching to you. But he did not look at my past. He saw that as mistakes. He is working with me, focusing on my future. That is who God is. Amen? Praise the Lord. As long as you are determined not to go back to your sin, he's ready to work with the rest of your life. So don't waste the rest of your life thinking that nothing can change. You can change. Amen? Your children can change. Your spouse can change. Your boss at work can change. It is you who will be immovable. You will be strong. Holding on to God, Lord, what is it that remains with me? Make use of it. And you will see that God will work with you gradually. He will take you to a height that you yourself you did not imagine you will ever get to. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. So, when you are familiar with some people, they take advantage of that to limit your destiny. Ah, don't try it. You can't. Ah, you are no match. You don't fit. Then what happened? You sit down. You don't fit. You don't match. They will intimidate you to frustrate your life. Praise the Lord. I told you this story many times of the boy that was beating everybody. And because he was beating everybody, I was afraid of him. Until he made the mistake of challenging me when my big uncle was coming. I didn't fight him in my strength. I challenged him because I know before he would kill me, my big uncle would rescue me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then God gave me a chance that day. I beat him thoroughly. That was in primary one. And all our six years together in primary school, when I'm coming this way, we go this way. He thought I was a... Amen? That's what happened. When you don't try, you have closed the chapter of your life. Eliab wanted to close the chapter of David's life, but David refused. You must refuse. Don't allow anybody to close the good chapter of your life. Don't allow circumstances to write you off. Gather what remains of your life. Focus on Christ. Initially, things may go awry. Things may look as if it is not going to happen. You had the testimony of our brother this morning. The document is still in my office. We put it on the altar over there all through. When we were moving, I saw this. I said, ah, this document must not be lost. Oh, Lord, have mercy. It was like it's not going to happen. Six years. Can you imagine? Somebody sitting on the property. But we kept hope alive. Today we are singing a new song. I pray you will sing a new song. I say you will sing a new song. One good thing about God is that he does not come late. Pain may endure forever. Glorious days are coming. I say glorious days are coming. So, what I'm telling you is that when people condemn you, when they rule you out, let them know that God has not written you off. A sister gave a testimony. We have been praying for this girl to come back home for how many years now? Then all of a sudden, the sister got sick. And I was telling the sister, pray that God will use this sickness to restore your family. It, it looked very strange to her. Say yes. Pray it. All of a sudden, all the people, the children that have abandoned her, they started coming around because of the sickness. The girl that we have been begging to come back home, he's back home now. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. So don't allow anybody to close your future. You have a glorious future. You have made a mistake fine. One good thing about David was that when he made the mistake he committed, he didn't go back to them. Right? He did not go back to his sins. Don't, don't go back to your sins. Praise the Lord. Even Jesus had the same problem. The people of his own city, they limited him. Am I right? But it was to their own disadvantage. Because when he came, you, capital son, is he not Joseph's son? Ah, everybody's a prophet now. Look at people following. He even had disciples. Who you? We know you. You used to carry your daddy's armor and so. And the Bible says, the Lord Jesus, he could not do mighty works there. Amen. But that did not determine who he was. That did not stop him from fulfilling his destiny. Some people wrote him off. Some people were waiting for him. That is how life is. Have you been written off? Let me tell you. Don't close that chapter. Some people are waiting for you. They are waiting for you to touch their lives. They are waiting for you to be a blessing. So if they have closed that chapter, go to another area. Let the chapter be reopened somewhere else where you will be a blessing. Are you following me this morning? Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. And so when they said, is this the carpenter's son? Yes, I'm the carpenter's son, but I'm still the Lord Jesus Christ. So if they say, is this not the criminal? Yes, I was a criminal, but now all things have become new because I'm in Christ. Amen? Is that not the thief? Yes, I was a thief. I stole. But now I am clean because I am in Christ. And God is not interested in what I, steal, in what I stole. God is interested in what I'm going to give. Did you follow me this morning? So, gather your life together. You have been rejected. Some people are waiting to accept you. You have been frustrated. There are people that are waiting for you to encourage them. So, if you are not encouraged, how will you encourage them? How will you touch their lives? Praise the Lord. Are you still here? Now, one thing you need to also know is that limitations will come when you focus on your weaknesses. Do you follow me? Limitations will come when you focus on what? Weaknesses. Apart from people imposing limitations on you, you assess yourself. You reach a conclusion, a conclusion that, no, I can't make it. It's not possible. Amen? You are not fulfilling your destiny by your own strength. He said, by strength shall no man prevail. Amen? You are not pursuing and fulfilling your destiny by your own strength. You are pursuing and fulfilling your destiny because it is the will of God for you. Praise the Lord. When you want to carry a child, what does the child do? What does the child do before you carry the child? He will raise up his hand. Why can't the child jump up to your hand? That is an indication that I surrender, I release myself to you, carry me with your strength. That is what God is looking for. The moment you keep on trying and keep on cutting corners and doing things by yourself, God will fold his arm. But the moment you say, I surrender, what will you do? He will take you up. Somebody asked me a question this morning. He said, they were talking about something in their church. He said, is it by flesh? Will you not be caught? And I told the person, I said, look, it is not everybody that will hear, go and preach. Are you hearing me? It's not everybody that will hear that. I didn't hear, go and preach. I strayed. I, will, I used that straight a quote because God has a plan for me. I became a pastor out of necessity. I love the church I was going to in Nigeria and there was no branch of it in Dallas Metroplex. And we started. And we were asking for pastor. They gave us the first one. They gave us the second one. We were waiting for the third one. The road was closed. Amen? So it's not everybody that you will sleep and you will see yourself carrying Bible. Then you know you are. No. Isaiah said, here I am. Send me. God did not say, Isaiah, I have chosen you. He said, no. Here I am. Send. I am available. Make yourself available. And God is going to use you. Amen. 
When we started as fellowship, when we finished preaching the as fellowship pamphlet, no message again. Nothing to preach again. I will read the Bible, read, 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 nothing to preach. I bought one big Bible commentary, Matthew Henry's Bible commentary. I will read, 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 and just by the time it was time to present, nothing was coming. Then my wife told me, go and pray. I said, pray. You are not praying, you know. You are just told him, pray. Then I will pray. The first thing that happened was boldness came. I was no longer afraid to stand in front of people. And then God started interpreting things to me. Then God started showing me things that I could use to encourage people. And some people, all they need to do is to hear my story. And where God took me from and where I am today. Praise the Lord. So don't write yourself up. Don't focus on your weaknesses. You are not totally weak. Do you understand me? There is no human being created totally 100% weak. You have your strengths. You have your strong points. Identify them. Some of you can talk. That's his strength if you use it positively. Some of you, you are not ti never tired of driving. You can drive and drive and drive a car to pieces. Amen? Some of you, no matter the challenge, you will still smile. You are dying inside, but you are smiling. This is a strong point for you. Use it. It will be a blessing to others. Praise the Lord. Some of you can fight. Don't fight human beings. Fight the devil. It's a strong point. Fight the devil. Amen? So don't focus all on your weaknesses. Recognize them. But get out of them to locate your potentials. That's what happened to David. I know who you are. And David responded. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I pray God will empower us. In verse 29, and David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? There is a cause. There is a reason that brought me here. And there is a reason why I am asking that question. There is a purpose. There is a reason why you find yourself where you find yourself. It is for you to discover that God is still waiting for your future. He's waiting for what? For your future. God is waiting for your future. He wants to make the best out of your future. Don't allow anybody to say, I know who you are. And then you settle for that. Praise the Lord. It's very painful when people condemn you. Am I right? It's very painful when people reject you. And then, for days, for weeks, for months, for life, you may not get out of it. Because they have sealed your future thinking that nothing good can come out of your life. Amen? But the moment you remember that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, the moment you remember that God created you and they are not the one that created you, you will be bouncing back. You take the next step. Amen? The next step is always assess yourself. Admit where you are wrong. Admit the mistakes you have made. And make effort not to go back to that mistake. Very important. Then the next thing, ask God, what is the next step? The next step for me may not be the next step for you. The next step for you may be reconciliation, making peace. The next step for you may be to avoid your weaknesses and follow your strong points. The next step for some of us may be look at what you are doing now and see what you can do better. It may involve you going back to school. Am I right? Yes. It may involve you changing your profession, doing something else. But there is always a greater future. And you will get there in the mighty name of Jesus. I say you will get there in the name of Jesus. And the next thing you need to know is that you are a masterpiece. You are not a creation by error. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I look at myself and I see a bigger Joseph. I don't see a limited Joseph. All I need to do is to sit down what is the way forward and pursue it. 
And that is what is meant for you. Look at Joseph. He saw Goliath. I mean, look at David. He saw Goliath. Everybody was running away from Goliath. But the man, the spirit of God in him would not allow him to rest. He looked at his past. This God dealt with me in the past. He delivered me from lion and the bear. You, Goliath, you are not different. It doesn't matter what Eliab is saying. I know who I am, and I know I've been dealing with my God, and it's going to take me past this Goliath. And that was the beginning of his glory. He confronted Goliath. At the end of the day, he defeated Goliath. What happened? Women, they woke up their mouth. They started singing. Oh, Saul killed 1,000. David has killed his 10,000. And Saul became angry. Amen? It is good for your enemy to be angry. To take you to the next level. It was his anger that took David to the next level. He pursued David to his destiny, just like they pursued Joseph to his destiny. Amen? David did not give up. He was anointed. He knew what God had deposited in him. He was on the throne. He won't force himself there, but he was avoiding death. Avoid death. Are you hearing me? Avoid what? David could have waited. What did I do? Let me just die and go. But he avoided. He was running away from Saul. If I ran to the camp of lesser enemy so to, to escape, don't die. Don't commit suicide. Don't allow anybody to kill you because greater days are ahead of you and you will get there. And by the time God was ready, Saul made terrible mistake. And God said, I have rejected him. Amen? I have what? I found a man after my own heart. I know what I can make with his future. I know all these things are done to him to prepare him. And at the end of the day, David mounted the throne. Amen? The Bible says, and the Lord said to, and the Samuel said to Saul, he said, God will have established your kingdom forever. But because of this, your kingdom shall no longer continue. I've handed it over to David. And David continued. He did not miscarry his destiny. I pray you will not miscarry your destiny. I say you will not miscarry your destiny. I say you will not miscarry your destiny. In the name of Jesus. Live your life to please God, not man. That's the one thing I want to say before we close. Live your life to please who? God. Not man. Again, live your life to please you. No. Not. No. Because the time is coming, you will not please man. All the things you have been doing to please man will be forgotten. They don't remember your good things. You are now the devil that must not be connected with. The time they were hugging you, you are the best. Now that you are not able to please them, what happened? They reject you. As long as God has not rejected you, don't allow anybody to say, I know who you are. Amen? Amen. If they say, who you know, I know who you are, ask them, define me. Who am I? You are the devil. You are Satan. You are son of a Jesus. You are that and that and that. Okay. Thank God. That is your personal assessment. I don't take that because the Lord told me I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I move on to my future that is more glorious. You stay at my back and perish there. And then you move forward. And by the time they see you, they see you at the top. Eliab saw David at the top. And David did not come down. You will not come down in Jesus' name. Yeah. Let's rise up this morning. I want you to open your mouth. And talk to the Lord. If you are not born again, you don't really know who you are. Whatever definition the devil gives you is true. You are not the true child of God. So this is the time to settle your case with God. Close your eyes and talk to the Lord. Say, oh Lord, my Father. Say, oh Lord, my Father. Whatever I have done. 
and has made the world to give me a name that you have not given me. Forgive me, O oh Lord. Open your mouth and pray. O oh Lord, anything I have done that has made the world to give me a name that you have not given me, O oh Lord, forgive me. Have mercy on me in the name of Jesus. Anything I have done, anything I have left undone, whatever I have said, O oh Lord, that has made the world to give me a name that you, O oh Lord, you have not given me, Father, forgive me. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, I reject every name the devil and his agents has given me. In the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, I reject every name the devil and his agent has given me. Father, Lord, I reject it. Any name the devil has given me, any name that man has given me, that is not in accordance with the word of God, with the plan of God for my life, I reject it, I reject it, I reject it in the name of Jesus. I reject every ungodly name that the world has given me. I don't bear them, I don't leave them in the name of Jesus. I don't bear them, I don't leave them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, O oh Lord, by your divine arrangement, connect me to my glorious future. In the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, my Father, by your divine arrangement, connect me, O oh Lord, to my glorious future. In the name of Jesus, by your divine plans, by your divine arrangement, O oh Lord, connect me to my glorious future. In the name of Jesus, connect me, O oh Lord, connect me, O oh Lord, connect me, O oh Lord to my wonderful and glorious future in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Anything in my future that will make me to live the way the enemy has defined me, be destroyed now in the name of Jesus. Whatever is ahead of me that will make me to live according to the way the enemy has described me, let it die, let it die, let it die, let it be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, whatever it is, O oh Lord, that is in my future, that is ahead of me, that will make me to live according to the way my enemy has described me, O oh Lord, let it be destroyed now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. O oh Lord, this year is coming to an end. Defend me and my household. In the name of Jesus, my Lord and my Father. This year is coming to an end. Defend me and my household. Defend me and my family in the name of Jesus. O oh Lord, my God, this year is coming to an end. Arise, O oh God, defend me and my family. Defend me and my household in the name of Jesus. As the year is coming to an end, by your mighty hand, by your power, defend me, O oh Lord. 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 Oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. One more. Say, O oh Lord, withdraw the platform that I've given to the enemy to afflict me. Withdraw it now. In the name of Jesus. Any platform that I've given to the enemy to afflict me, to afflict my family, to afflict my children, I withdraw it now. The great masses of God. Let that platform be withdrawn, be withdrawn, be withdrawn, be withdrawn, be withdrawn. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, the platform that I've given to the enemy to afflict me, to attack me, my Lord and my God, I withdraw it, I withdraw it, I withdraw it. In Jesus' name we pray. Add this one, say those who have rejected me, they will beg to be part of my celebration in the name of Jesus. Lord, those who have rejected me, those who have written me off, oh Lord, I pray very soon, oh Lord, they will beg to be part of my celebration in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, those who have rejected me, Father Lord, before this year runs to an end, let them beg 
to be part of my rejoicing, part of my celebration, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Almighty Father, we thank you. Ancient of days, we bless your holy name. Father, we say, be thou exalted in the name of Jesus. Our Lord, our God, we know human beings will look at our past. They will write off our future. But you are God. You will look at our future and you will see what you can make out of it. Father, we pray. Plug us into your agenda. Plug us into your plans. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord.